Today we're going to be looking at how I made some simple animations that go a long way in this landing page or what we built using Webflow. We load in. Now this is going to be for some lofts and I'm not going to go into any of the web application stuff in the back end, really just looking at animations on the front end here. They have uh, a little bit more of an upper, like an upscale feel for Corpus Christi living in downtown. So we kind of lean into a bit of those things. The downtown area is right by the water. Corpus is known for its beach. So we lean into that a little bit in terms of colors and other simple little animations that I'll get into. Uh, but we load in. We we do have a nice video of the, the property here, how it kind of relates to the downtown area, what that looks like, and a simple little scale in, and then the lofts load in here on page load. Okay, we come down here, and then to kind of immerse you into, like you're walking up to the building, kind of zooms in, and then uh, the text kind of comes in here. And then we have just some simple little animations. These are fairly easy here, and then just a, a slight parallax, you kind of see how it kind of goes in there, just to create just a little bit of movement. That's all. Just really getting away from things being static, creating a little bit of movement for some visual interest. And there was actually an animation that a guy actually triggered and skipped past. I only have it doing once on that one, just so it can load here. There you go. So we see how that page loads in. Uh, so the end of that uh, image kind of reveals itself with that little bit of navy blue, again, leaning into the water area downtown. And then we have just some uh, nice ease ends. Again, just bringing in some really... Uh, simple animations. Uh, this one's a, a bit of an interesting one. So this is um, going to be a scrolling animation, really. And you can see that it's a sideways scroll as we kind of go through like a look book of the downtown area, just kind of look at um, one tiny little um, beach part by the by the pier. And then we have uh, just a, a, a nice popular area here on Chaparral. And then we do have just a nice image of uh, by our uh, event center with uh, the Lexington here. Um, a nice photo of the old bridge while it's all lit up with colors uh, really early in the morning, a blue hour. Um, just some new things that they built here in downtown. Let's go ahead and do. We got some water behind that. And just the port right here as well. So all the boats and uh, just what it kind of looks like to be down here. Okay. And then we just get some nice, simple, uh, again, more layout stuff. Nothing really, really special here. Uh, but we do have this nice little uh, wave here just to kind of bring in a little bit of the water movement as well. That was kind of done with some CSS. So let's get into how we actually made these. And oh, this isn't going to be a full tutorial, mainly just kind of guide you through what I did and hopefully gives you a little bit of inspiration to think about on your projects as well. So we load into the project, uh, nothing special here. So you're going to see a few things. Now this section, okay, is going to be uh, one long components that has a, this has a height of 100 VH. And if we look back at our we see here intro height div and that's going to have our height of 300 vh now what this is doing is it's a scroll trigger now this was actually done with gsap and i'll show you how it's actually a, not too complex of an animation but we created a 300 vh height because we want to be able to scroll through that much height so the animation has time to play out while you're scrolling using something called scrub so let's go ahead and talk about this one first so i'm going to open up a code here and we have some uh, simple gsap you can see the animation is not very complex not very long here uh, we're going to have a scroll trigger. So we just register the scroll trigger and then we create a GSAP timeline. So I won't be able to do like a GSAP um, tutorial here, just kind of walking through how I set this up. So when you register the plugin scroll trigger, then it can go ahead and when you register the plugin scroll trigger. What you're doing is you're telling it, hey, I want to use this extra add on called scroll trigger. And what that does is it allows you, once you scroll to a certain point, an animation will trigger. And the timeline, really, what that does is it gives us um, multiple steps, like allows us to do things in, a, in, in an order, if you will. And there's other parameters around that. I won't get into those. Um, but our timeline has uh, really just two things, these twos. And so we have a GSAP 2, meaning we are going from what the state it is to a new state. And so whenever we define 2, it takes what it is at its baseline, and then it actually just defines where 2 is, okay? In this example, uh, so we're telling it that we are going to go to a width of 100% of that uh, of the container and a height of 90 vh of that container, um, and this is going to be triggering on the class of home intro image uh, wrapper. And so, what I like to do is, um, whenever I go into my animations or any any building in general, I like to wrap my images inside div block div blocks for the most part because I can really control and shape how these uh, images are sized. But for here, we're, we're changing the size of this. This is a relative element. We have the image on the inside as an absolute element, taking up the full space, 100% width, 100% height, set to cover. 
So now the image will continue to react and fill with how that div is shaped without me having to figure out anything else with the image. Kind of gets around having to do a background image. This gives us some SEO benefits. That's how we we'll reset this, this one up here. So essentially what's happening is that this image, as we scroll, is just getting wider as we define. So it's starting at 40 VH for width, and that's going to go to 100% of the, the container here. And then it's going to take up a height. Instead, it has 60 VH, and it's going to open up wider to 90 VH. And so that's what that uh, image is doing there. And then essentially the home intro text, so that's going to be the, the text we set here. Uh, that's going to go ahead and animate to an opacity of 100, and then we're using a power in 1. So once that other once the image finishes its animation then the text now next goes in and finishes um, its its load in its ease in so you can see right here it's visible and i'm not in my code defining a, a state where it's not invisible so it's some little ways we, we do things like that or are really just defining the style inside the page here and so i gave the style a home intro text of zero it's that way it or the opacity of zero that way it stays and loads already with no visibility so it doesn't flicker with um sometimes it does with javascript and so if you're unfamiliar with gsap as well the gsap is going to be an external library that uses uh, javascript to go ahead and write animations it's very very performant i highly recommend using it it is a little bit more advanced as you're getting out of the webflow interactions but you can do a lot of cool stuff in there that you sometimes might be not doable with webflow natively and so really we install those with the CDN and GSAP itself does have its free CDN and then a couple of free plugins as well that you can go ahead and use and play around with. Um, and then right here, I just installed my animation code. So that's the first one. So now we kind of come down to our images here. Now, thankfully Webflow has made things uh, pretty easy and you'll see I do actually have some animations on the images here. And really, thankfully, because how Webflow has made things really easy with this no code, Whenever we scroll into view, I just set a slide in from right. So it just kind of eases in from the right. I'm nothing too crazy here, but again, a little can go a long way. And we don't really ever want to overdo with animations. And that wasn't my goal. That's why they're they're simpler in nature, just to kind of walk people in here up the scale a little bit. You usually land on these pages are static, but we didn't really want that. And then the parallax is actually going to happen. So while it's scrolling into view. So now this is another scroll animation. Okay. And so this happens while it's recording the scroll of this animation here or the scroll of your window i'm sorry and so here you can go ahead and, and take a look at this and what's happening and all this is doing is really taking it whenever our animation is starting at a height of, or a, a position of zero and then at the end of where we're scrolling it takes it to a position of here so when the element is entering starts entering the viewport that animation starts so starts entering and then when the element is fully invisible, then the animation stops. So what's happening is the animation starts as soon as it enters the viewport down here, and then it will end as soon as it exits the viewport right here. So there's just a slight movement as I kind of scroll and it follows the scroll with it. Now this one's a, a fun one here. Um, so essentially this is a, a, another Webflow animation. And uh, this one looks like the, the image is revealing. And so I can go ahead and show that here. And it's actually a pretty simple setup. And so I'll hit play and you'll see the animation reveals. And I'm not really doing anything for hiding the image itself. So I have a background of, of white that, you know, the, the page is white. And then I'm going to have my image wrapper. And again, this is why I love to do wrappers on images because I can kind of play around with some of these things as well. Images on the inside. Again, this is going to be positioned absolute like I mentioned earlier. Now I do have these two other divs here. Okay. Now one of them is going to be an image... Uh, wrapper that's going to be blue and one of them's white now the white one's going to be on top the most top element that's going to match the background because it look like there's no image there at all and then the blue one is going to be what's going to help us look like the image is loading in or a, an animation is happening for him so essentially what's happening is whenever i set this up and these are actually set to a width of zero so they don't they don't display but because of the animation that we build whenever we do our start right here I'm starting it at a width of 100%. And the same for the blue. They both start at 100%. But now we need to stagger these interactions so then one happens before the other. So what we want is we want the white one to go away first. So you'll see that the white one will go ahead and move away. So we set this. We took our white our white tab and then we gave it a duration of 0.5 seconds in quad and then put our width zero. Then we did the same thing for the blue. 
And then what happens is now it goes through its steps. The, the white goes away to reveal the blue, and then the blue goes away to reveal the image. Pretty simple stuff there. Now here we do have some uh, simple um, slide ends as well. Um, but now the, the next fun one here is this is actually, this does take a bit of work to set up. So we have a track of images that are visible through throughout the page. And we can kind of scroll and we can see them. And if we leave this as is, then it's going to, then you know, the page can scroll. That's not a great user experience for the user. So what we do is we actually set this overflow. Nine, but this has a couple of elements here that I'll get into. So we have our, our base section in general. And again, I'm following client first. So I have my home images and I have the height. I want this to take up the full height of the screen to kind of give it that immersed feel. So this one's set to 100 VH here. And this is the overall width of the elements. So it sets a 500 viewport width. And I'll get into that in a second on why that is. But again, similar concept. And the other one set to 300 at the top. to scroll through that. Now uh, this one, this sets a 500. So we can scroll through these images and it's not really fast scroll. I'm going to give it some space so it can scroll. Okay, but now we have the home image is sticky. So again, there's going to be a scroll here. And this sticky means we want to keep this in place as things are scrolling. Now there's another interesting thing here. You'll notice that this is not the element that's that's set to overflow overflow hidden. It's actually my sticky element. So the sticky element, there's a, a weird thing that happens. Whenever you set that uh, or uh, say anything in the parent element to the sticky, then the sticky element doesn't work. So to get around that, we just set this one to sticky here and everything works perfectly fine. Okay, so now we have our track. And so essentially this is just what's holding all of our images and what's gonna scroll, okay? And we gave this some padding. I just styled this the way I wanted it here. And then this again has a height of 100%, taking up a 100% of the, the parent element that it's in. Uh, the sticky one also has a height of 100 VH, 100% as well. And now these are where my images are gonna be. So now I have my image and I've just kind of styled these the way I wanted and put the images in here and so on. But now getting into the animation itself, essentially what we are doing here is we're going to be creating a horizontal scroll. So you see this is a very simple animation. What's happening is you're starting at zero and this has a move of zero. And then at the very end, we have a, a move of ending at 100%. So it's taking that entire element and that track and moving it 100% of the ending. And then once again, looking at the when the element is fully visible, then it starts. So what that happens is it lets the image actually get into full view before it starts scrolling to the right. And then as the image is fully visible again, like getting to the end, then it'll start its next animation. So you'll see that as I'm scrolling down, then you'll notice that 14% is right here, 41% is right here and so on. And then it gets to the end here and then it stops. And there are a couple uh, little nuances to this too that um, I won't really get into unless I do a full tutorial because you can do a full tutorial on this on its own. At the end of the day, you have to sideways move uh, for this element. And there's one little line of code in here as well that actually helps me calculate a couple of things to um, create certain widths for these these images. And this helps me be a little bit more dynamic. So essentially, there's this line of a jQuery here and it gives me that home image's height, grabs each of them, it loops through it, grabs the width of that image, and then it... it calculates it all, adds it all up, and then sets it as the entire width for that uh, home image's track element. So if you remember, I had my width at 500 VH. Now this is actually going to be calculated based on the amount of images in there. So then that way it all scrolls equally. And if I decide to add or move images later, then it won't be super fast or super slow. I don't have to worry about manually calculating this in my head. And then lastly, we have the CSS uh, here. So this one is uh, actually done with just some custom code. And we got a couple of things going on here. So I have a line graphic that this is going to be an SVG as well. Um, so the SVG is defined here. And then there's some styles set in here. So it's blue and graphic, so on this slide. And uh, by creating this S SVG, now we can go ahead and write some CSS for this button in here as well whenever you hover over it. And so we have some transforms, um, things that are not able, you know, not natively able to do inside of Webflow. Uh, and then we do have our cubic uh, bears are here. So there's, a, there's a, a bunch going on here inside the CSS to essentially make it the way it is uh, on this one. And so, um, what we can do here is later on, I can actually leave this one available for, for cloning, um, if we want to, and then I'll let you be able to copy this, this button. And that now results in a you know, pretty simple experience of loading in here, coming in here, seeing our images come up. Another image be revealed, viewing our images here, and then into the end of the page.
So again, the whole idea is that a little can go a long way and not to overdo animations unless it's called for it or it adds to the experience or story you're trying to tell. And I usually lean on the side of being minimal over adding all kinds of flair to a site.